right guys what is going on i know that it's been a um a long time since we've actually seen the reactor running last video with the reactor in it it didn't seem like things were going that well you know like we're saying like man it doesn't work anymore well the good news is it actually does work okay um and it's been working really well to be honest with you um despite all the geometrical problems with the old unused waveguides there um when this thing is you know running properly for like a couple it takes a little bit longer to heat up right but once it heats up it's pretty much there so i've been getting some really good oil yields some really good carbon yields from this thing and actually um i've been integrating different types of catalysts i've been using some of the pyrolysis oil as a catalyst some lime or calcium oxide as a catalyst and that's been going very well too i have some videos here of some of the oil i've been getting usually in the past the oil i would get would be really thick gooey dark brown stuff almost like crude oil you know and sometimes if you light a flame to it it would you know hold sometimes it would not but Recently, I'm getting almost like this light brown, almost golden oil after I added some of the, the lime catalysts in there. And it's it works a lot better. It's it's not as waxy, not as many wax compounds in there. And uh, it does light to a flame. So there's some parts of it that burn off pretty quick, right? Almost like gasoline, naphtha. And then there's some parts that won't light to a flame, almost more like a diesel product, right? Which... It's good to see that we're getting both in there, you know, I'm just speaking speculation here, it really could be either one, could be just one or the other, but I'm assuming that there's both gasoline and diesel products and naphtha all in here at once, considering, you know, everything that these come from plastics, which come from crude oil. So, um, that's been really cool, getting these oil yields, and I still been running the reactor every day just to, you know, continue to gather research and data and um so that way i can make this uh next reactor the best possible now concerning the next reactor okay i have not worked on it yet okay i've been taking my time making sure that i'm going to do this right uh making sure i'm getting all the the different perspectives and insights that i can from you guys um and from everybody around me because yeah we want to make this the one right the one that we get genuine fuel yields from the one that we can take genuine measurements on so I've been looking at this pipe. Uh, this pipe is, it's around 36 inches tall. And the diameter, uh, the inside diameter is a little bit over 12 inches. The outside diameter is like 13 almost, I think. So this pipe here, the vision is, it's going to be horizontal no matter what, okay? Because when I tested the, the magnetrons on the sides of the vertical reactor, we saw how that went. It didn't work. But we can mount them vertically on a horizontal reactor and then we can have multiple because the issue is if this reactor is standing straight up we can have as many magnetrons that, that we want at the top but it just won't penetrate to the bottom that well right but if we can have this horizontal that will solve that problem now i'm also not gonna have this thing in a circle like it is like in a pipe why that's mainly because of how i'm going to integrate this auger slash screw conveyor slash agitator now, it's going to be a shaftless design, all right? I've been doing a lot of research on this stuff, and a shaftless design will be the key to this because a shaftless design has many benefits. For one, it only needs one bearing on one side, so that's only one hole I need to worry about sealing. For two, it takes no intermediate bearings along it. For uh, three, it's, it also can move, like, sticky material, you know? Um, this is what they used to use to uh, move like sewage or municipal solid waste and stuff like this is pretty much exactly what this plastic would be in fact there's a video here of it moving some plastic right like that's literally what we'll be doing another thing is since it won't have a shaft that means that there's a lot more plastic that can go in there at once and another amazing thing about having those shaft is um, that will allow the microwaves to get down to the plastic in more areas. If there's a shaft, the microwaves will hit that shaft and reflect back up rather than hitting the plastic. So that's all the more area the plastic can be hit. The last thing that I've been looking into a lot is sealing the rotary shaft. Because, you know, that's quite a hard thing to do. How can you make a rotating shaft airtight, right? It's kind of hard. But there's been two options I've been looking at. Packing and mechanical seals. Now... This is a picture of packing, right? Obviously, it's confusing to you, it's confusing to me, but it actually is quite simple. 
it's been done forever. Basically, you just stuff a whole bunch of loose material. Well, not really loose, but you compress a whole bunch of, like, compressible material in a little box around the, the, the rotating shaft, right? Kind of like, I mean, just think about, like, if you were if you had, like, uh, an axle and you just stuff a whole bunch of shirts between it or something, right? So, it's, it's going to work. It would work for an airtight seal, but it would not work. For an oil tight seal, okay? It'll be like back then when I used that fiberglass gasket, the fiberglass rope gasket on my um my reactor. It will be leaking oil, which is not as bad as leaking gas, but it will still leak, okay? Another option is mechanical sealing. This is actually the better type of seal. Mechanical seals, they uh they don't do the same thing as packing. It basically is a a stationary face and a rotating face that are like pushed really close up to each other via uh, springs. Um, that one is a lot more expensive, granted, um, and potentially more complex to get my hands on. Though I did find a potential uh, thing I can use on Google the other day, or not Google, but Amazon, um, but it's used for like a, a water pump for a pool. So I don't know if that will work for gas as well. We'll test all types of stuff out, okay? So that's really all I've been doing with this. That's how it's been looking. If you want to support me, I have a Patreon. Give me your suggestions. Thank you very much for watching, and I will catch up with you guys another time.